Alright all, this is James Johnson here, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play tutorial series in Crusader Kings 2. Um, when last we were, uh, when last we were, uh, in the last episode I should say, the, our, uh, our rivals, or our southern neighbors, took over Dyft, as it is part of their de jure claim. Um, so now, it's just going to delay our progress to, to take over these three places, because we're going to end up with the truce modifier uh, hitting us three times over. With that being said, oh look, it seems that I'm with child. Hey, awesome. So that's more possible alliances for us. And we just got done with a party. So I get a nice little diplomacy gain and 20 prestige. So speaking of alliances, I don't think Merlin is merry or is betrothed yet. And how is my possible wife shaping up? She is focusing on simulating Anglo-Saxon culture. But she is Anglo-Saxon. I wonder why that happened. Father was Anglo Saxon. Mother was Anglo Saxon. Guardian is Anglo Saxon. Is sometimes this just seems to be used in odd ways by the AI. Um, but maybe we can utilize this to our benefit. Uh, we I wonder if he would be interested in letting me No. No foreign power. Okay, let's worth a look. So anyway, we were thinking about getting Merlin married for an alliance possibility. So we currently have an alliance with Wessex, I believe. Well, not alliance, but not aggression pact. Yes. Okay. North Umbria is a mess. I don't think they're going to stabilize anytime soon. Pickland, I'm generally not a fan of lying with them while they're in their tribal stage. And I would rather ally with Scotland when it becomes feudal. East Anglia is looking a little weak. Essex. I don't know. Um, yeah, Essex can't these guys. So Mercia, I think, is the only serious contender that I want to harbor any relations with right now. So, big age disparity. Um, actually, what we could do... She's 48. By the time he is 16, that'll be 14 years from now, she'll be 58, 62 on death's door. Why not? <coughs> It gets me the non-aggression pact I want. That, that'll work. Uh, 
Uh oh. He's mad. Arrest him. So while sometimes I, uh. Sometimes I decide I want to play as a heretic. Because it makes it easy to holy war and to, to do some map painting. As I've also said, I'm not a big map painter, so it's it's also kind of a challenge of, hey, if I became like a, a Protestant England, would I be able to hold it uh, over the course of time against you know my Catholic neighbors and stuff like that? So. Um, that's something that I usually decide to go into the game with the goal of, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But in this game, I don't have that goal, so I'm going to stay true to the Catholic faith. With that being said, I need to go tell my... buddy and friend that he needs to convert that I can give him his job back. <coughs> I don't know what's going on down here in Dived. Uh, attacking in West France in whole war over Barcelona. It's nice to see France pushing against the tall heads, if you will. Um, and maybe I shouldn't use that while I'm streaming. That does sound a little disparaging, right? Ah, uh, screw it. <coughs> so, anyway. Um, I'm noticing that my friend is not necessarily the best man for the job. And, you know, I think we need the best man for the job. I'm typically the guy that's teaming up with Francia or whoever to to try to take back good Catholic lands. Not my rival. I'm almost gonna feel bad when I have to stab this this Catholic good Catholic nation in the back. But, you know, they are my rightful property. This is going to be the Kingdom of Wales, after all. Alright, the buildings Prince Carl was looking to reinforce should be torn down and replaced with sturdy houses and watchtowers. But Prince Carl was insistent something could be done about them. I told him my honest opinion about the buildings. Yes, the material from the old houses could be used to erect better buildings. And why is my chancellor slash courtier, who isn't technically a title holder of anything other than his Prince of Bavaria title, which doesn't come with any land, why is he building buildings anyway? <laughs> <coughs> the church is a greedy thing who always needs more alms, but I have deep t pockets, and it's for a good cause. Yes, yes, more money to the church. It's an expensive activity being a 
faithful, zealous Catholic. Speaking of expenses, I'm up to 132 gold. Okay, 171. I think there was a building modifier here. New roads, local building costs 15% until another year. I may want to utilize that modifier before it goes away if there's any ability to. There is sort of, but that's for troop manufacturing, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with troop manufacturing, but right now I need to grow my economy. And that means gold manufacturing. So I need to stick to gold manufacturing. just realizing I'm working on carousing right now, which I haven't, you know, wasted that much time in that uh, I can still easily get three rounds of carousing in before I have to change, or before I'm even able to change, I should say. So, and we've already done one round. Um, sure, you want to get, you know, as many rounds as possible in. But three is all that's needed to get the uh, the lifestyle trait, which I'm not sure if I want to go with hedonist or not. Um, hedonist zealous would be an interesting combination, I suppose. The so socializer is is a pretty safe way to go. Um, oh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there, right? So I've got two friends. The last time I asked my husband, he told me he had no desire to come to my... And, you know, he's 55. He's on death's door. I'm not even going to invite him. So we didn't waste any time at all, actually. There we go. Let's try this again. Seems to me I've invited this guy before as a vassal. Yeah, he's the chaste and craven. He will probably say no, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Bedivere. 
about a Tristan? He said no, as I figured he would. <clears throat> so the mayor not liking me is is a problematic thing because he's going to give me last tax money, and I don't like it when people don't like me. So. Give a master of the horse. He's not really good enough to be a counselor, sadly. Um, he is brave. Well, I could have worse commanders, I suppose. Maybe that'll raise his opinion of me enough that he'll start paying better tax money. are constantly pestering me about religion. Lord and money to the church, no matter what I do. Promise to pray more or the Holy Scripture more. Thoroughly, they won't leave me alone. Please, can someone help? Should I ask my good friend, recently heretic, who has been released from prison to help me? Or should I just suck it up and deal with it? I'm gonna suck it up and deal with it. <clears throat> I am zealous after all. Alright, so our, our uh, Chancellor still hasn't fabricated anything yet. Hey! I'm known as the Mary. Mary Queen Guinevere. I've had worse titles in the game, I'll tell you that. Is their push for Barcelona going? And how is that Catholic revolt doing? Um, 5% for the Carling and Umayyad civil war. Seems Catholic revolt isn't a thing anymore. started. Excellent, another best friend.
Alright, the reveling and carousing is over. For now, it's time to get back to real life. So another diplomacy hike. And we got more research from Constantinople. Things are going fairly well right now. Characters progressing. levies of two. So he's having to ferry his troops down 200 at a time. So I don't know if you guys use this outlier here or not, but if you look here, you can see what the taxes are that you're getting from each of your holdings. And Mathrafel is where I'm getting the least amount of tax money, and that's obviously why I chose to upgrade that castle town there, is because, well, my holding that gives me the least money is the one I'm most concerned with upgrading their financial capabilities. <clears throat> I just find that an easy way to figure out, okay, where do I need to spend my money this time? So while I, I appreciate the uh, Viking content, and I enjoy playing as a Viking, the whole raiding thing can get a bit repetitive after a while. I'm thinking he might fancy me, huh? No, he's your friend. He's not your type. Come on. Isn't that the thing? You're, you're, you're too good of a friend? Still somehow holding his, his territory with his pathetic army. Don't tell him I said that. Wait. Strong claim on Bah.
Yeah, so sometimes I like to reset that mission. Um, I don't know if there's any truth to the uh, myth, if you will, but a lot of veteran players, uh, I've read a lot of veteran players on Steam and in the forums say that resetting the counselor mission can tend to have good effect. Though, how you prove something like that, I don't know. How, how am I to know that if I wouldn't have reset that, you know, three days later, he wouldn't have been about to accomplish the mission? So, it, it's in the mind's eye uh, whether or not there's any truth behind that. <coughs> So normally improved keep level 2 is the first thing that I do go in that line, but I was thinking that maybe I had already done it, and so that was improved keep level 3 that I just did, but because it makes sense that Turlinwig wouldn't have received the research from Pendragon yet, because it does take a little bit of time to spread that type of technology across borders. So some of you might be uh, saying, why aren't you saving your ducats to throw in more holdings here? And my counter that to that is I would have to build them equally, meaning I'd have to put in a city and a temple if I just click here to build a new holding because it will gray out the castle holding because uh, it, it wants you to build them evenly, which I'm not a fan of doing that. I want as many castles here as possible. And so there's a there's a path through through a uh, way of life if you utilize the uh, the plus three to stewardship. Um, I, it might just be called stewardship uh, focus. Uh, where you'll spark a castle 
uh, for cheaper I know a guy that can build a cheaper and I trust him event and that event can get you the castles you need welcome them with the lavish feast so they can get hurt a few days later <coughs> Wait for it, I'm psychic. That one of them is gonna get hurt. Here we are. The hedge knights have participated in the minor tournament together with their knights in Penburing. Sadly, one of those landless vagabonds has been severely injured. Yes, I'll pay for their medication. So my time of playing Crusader Kings 2 has uh, has taught me that hedge knights are rather frail creatures. <coughs> oh, King Carl won, did he? Oh, and he picked up a huge chunk of, of real estate. excommunicated and ugly. Poor guy. <coughs> the, the Pope didn't like the way he looked. We're, we're forgetting our duties of, of being a partier here, aren't we? Let's, let's get back to partying. <coughs> no, I'm not inviting you. You're, you're too square. He's, he's kind of square, isn't he? So, the spy master. And the steward. So we're we're getting some good friendly council members thanks to Carousel. one of those traits that will affect carousing.
any treasures yet. My cousin, huh? Seems that line of the family tends to be pretty good and pretty ambitious, too. teach because I'm going to have my own kids to worry about though I would like her to be taught by someone Welsh that's decent militarily with some decent traits <coughs> Ronnie Temperant Rock Craven. What? When did her brother become Craven? Um, have a huge amount of possibilities here. I think her brother... No, right here. So, wait, he's a dutiful cleric. Let her brother try her. Okay. Speaking of her brother, he needs to get married. Heir to a county. Go make your way in Italy. Try to keep your family Welsh, would you? <coughs> Maybe I was sending him off a little early. Obviously, he's not heading there anytime soon yet, but. going to be one of those characters that you just seed. You know how you seed your dynasty around the planet? Well, he's, he's going to disappear. That part of the dynasty is going to disappear into the, into the fold of Italy. And then one day I'll look down there and he'll be the king of Italy or something. Or one of his descendants. 
which, yeah, probably unlikely. The uh, seeding your dynasties, if you don't look after it very well, they tend to get themselves killed off. They love to revolt, get their title taken away. <coughs> I don't know what's up with that. It's like, hey, player created this 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 character here, so we're gonna mess with it. Oh, really? Who is my steward? So there's a 30% chance I could end up bitter rivals with one of my counselors, which I'm not a fan of, of, of that. Um, and there's a very good chance that I'm going to end up beaten up. Which, what woman wants to be beaten up? So I guess I'm going to have to run and cower, though that could lead to Craven. Really not a fan of Craven, but it's only a thirty percent chance of it. So let's cross our fingers, shall we? Yay, we we dodged the Craven bullet. The reveling and carousing is over for now. Time to get back to real life. Was it fun? Was it fun being chased around by your drunken steward? So with lifestyle traits, you can only have one. And right now I'm basically thinking, do I really want these lifestyle traits? Um, you know, a different lifestyle trait might be more advantageous to this character. Though, I don't see why. Um, Do I need that extra fertility? I've already got three sons. Or socializer gives me three diplomacy instead of giving me that intrigue. Socializer it is. And 796. Still got a year or so. Probably going to carouse one or two more times before then. <coughs> Wait, that was somebody getting married, right? King Word of Debarth is really... King Eckbert just accepts the suggestion by King Word of Debarth that Burnett and Garion and Sex First Gallo should marry Kent. Kent is not that dangerous. West Francia, Essex, Kent. Still the Duke of Tabarath. I didn't usurp your title. <laughs> well, 
technically I took his earldom, but it was rightfully mine. He needs to get over it. person burning at the stake. So I could be dabbling in some of the uh, societies. But I just don't feel like dabbling with the uh, societies right now at this stage of the game. I would rather feel a little more secure. Uh, get my kingdom knocked out of the way. Get, get whales kind of situated before I, I start dabbling with the society stuff. Right. So the problem is we're we're building up a few traits here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not sh I'm pretty sure that this one doesn't count, but pilgrimage might tw count towards the dreaded seven traits. And you may or may not know what I'm talking about, but when you get X number of traits, and I believe the magic number is 7, you'll notice that you'll uh, have events that happen that say, you know, you're, the, you're, for example, the greatest king and you lose your ambition. So if you were ambitious, you'd lose it which I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm not a fan of ambition. Uh, I consider that a horrible trait. And yes, I'm, I know I'm not uh, in the majority uh, in regards to ambition. A lot of people actually purposely take that trait. It's, it's not one that I go after. <coughs> But anyway, with that being said, um, yeah, you get more than seven traits, and uh, and events start happening to basically take some of those traits away. It's kind of the uh, uh, Crusader King's way of, of balancing your character and keeping him from getting too overpowered. <coughs>
So yeah, tonight I'm going to start taking part in a multiplayer Crusader Kings team game with uh, with some other people I've organized through Steam. And I'm, I'm finding that to be interesting. And I've also been debating uh, on whether or not I want to record these games. So, on the one hand, uh, it would be cool uh, to record a, a big multiplayer game, and it would probably be far more interesting than just watching me play uh, this Let's Play series. I would feel awkward doing the commentary uh, while I'm in TeamSpeak with these other players. And so if I was to stream that, it would probably be without commentary, and then you would be listening to the random ramblings of multiplayer discussion, if you will. And, you know, that may not even be about the game, you know. Sometimes discussions between human beings go off in weird directions. And so, yeah, I'm a little torn about streaming it just from that point of view. Not to mention these are going to be three-hour game sessions, and it already takes a considerable amount of time to, uh, to upload uh, a little over an hour-long game session to YouTube, and that's after I've already... Uh, run the file through a, a program that I utilize called Handbrake that um, basically kind of takes the file and, and takes it from being, you know, 2 gig to, to you know, uh, 20 or 30 meg or something like that. So, yeah, um... But that's still a little time-consuming to run through Handbrake. But it's a lot faster than than not running it through Handbrake and going straight through YouTube. So yeah, a little tip about uh, streaming and uploading games to YouTube if you ever find yourself in this situation. Go go find handbrake if you, if you say to yourself, "Wow, it takes forever to to upload my videos to YouTube." All right, finally. So we've got the fabrication going on. Let's use it. going on here? Cornish war to make king pay tribute. Oh, okay. Tributary war. Not, not so concerned about that. Civil war to increase council power. Right, back to the task at hand. Doo -doo. Let's double check to make sure that there's not anything crazy that's going to happen. West Francia doesn't have any fleet levies. I don't have to worry about them showing up. Essex. is in order before. Alright, 
Essex might not come into this war. And that's fine. If, if he doesn't show up on either side, it doesn't matter. Essex could show up. He's a thousand troops. A thousand troops. Twenty five hundred troops at most between those guys if that does happen. Just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna have my ally hunt, uh, hunt down these soldiers while I siege down Dyft since I have a siege leader. French. As they sit down there in Paris looking across the channel thinking, yeah, we'd love to come and help.
my ally too. He should not be able to call him in. Should I continue to siege down temple and city? Really? deal with that. I think. Yeah. I'm snoozing on the job here. War's over. 
Just uh, needed a little more time to switch over deal. <coughs> All right, he's gonna go back to statecraft for now. Because I am going to be stuck in a truce period, even though I should start fabricating now. Uh. So what happened with my alliance here? Um, Oh, I can break the... So we still have a non-aggression back. We no longer have an alliance. That's interesting. of bad blood between myself and my southern neighbor. Alright, so for the last thing we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to assign myself a new focus. Now, uh, I've gotten the carousing out of the way. I've built up my diplomacy pretty nicely. We've done pilgrimage. I'm how old? 27. Okay, so this is the t uh, time period of my life. Uh, 30, 30 years. Uh, you know, late 20s to late 30s. I like to be a businessman or in this case a businesswoman. So I'm thinking about going with the business trait. So I would like to get some of those empty holdings built up. But I'm not exactly raking in the dough quite yet. So yeah, we're gonna go with business so that we can rake in the dough. Um, and then in a, at about, when I turn around 40, uh, we're going to switch over to to Marshall to jack up the, the Marshall skill as high as possible and, and get a nice large army. That's typically how I kind of fork my characters. I'll start off with the pilgrimage, do carousing, go into business and then finish with Marshall and then uh, and then Hunter. I'll go hunting in my 50s. <coughs> anyway, with that being said, this concludes uh, this episode of, of our Let's Play more than tutorial series at this point. And I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a like or hit the subscribe button or any of that stuff. 
and I will see you next time. Until then, have a good day.